This is a long awaited new model and it's from IMC. And if we look at the label on the outer packaging, we see it says cranes etc. So we know this must be good. Lifting the lid, we can see the box inside and it's the DMAG AC709 mobile crane. And this is the collector's edition, which has got some special things inside the box. This box was wrapped by soft paper, and inside we see that the polystyrene trays are also wrapped with soft paper. So the packaging so far is excellent, and the first thing we can pull out is a book about the real crane. That's followed up by a smaller book, which is the build manual. And then we can move on to separate the two trays. No tapes to cut because they're joined together by the excellent plastic clips. The trays are helpfully marked top and bottom. And when we lift the lid, we can see the parts are all individually wrapped. Out come the giant hand cranes to do the first bit of heavy lifting. A very nice inclusion with the collector's edition of the model is this book. It's very high quality and it describes the development of the real crane. And it's packed full of really nice photos. It also covers some of the special versions of the machine. Thumbing through, the crane is shown in many colours, and here's one of my favourites, the NMT version. Overall, this is a very nice addition to this version of the model. Next up, we take a look at the build manual, and it starts with a very good listing of the parts. The assembly information is very comprehensive, and it seems to describe everything you need to know, except reading diagrams for the hooks. But there's more, and this version comes with an engraved keychain. And here we see that number two in the run of 285 models is Cranes Etc's. As for Cranes Etc being number two, I'm not sure about that. But there's still more, and there's a small box, and when we open that up, we see that there's a small keychain model of the AC700. And this is another nice touch with the model. We will start by putting the crane in its most basic road configuration. And to run off some rope, there's a removable side panel, which is nicely held in place by magnets. A key is included, and that operates the winch drum. And that's of the nice positive variety, where you push it in to release the brake. There are two hook blocks provided with the model, so we'll put the smallest one on. And it's a nice metal block. And the movement of the hook is full, because you can rotate it and move it side to side. To read the hook block up, we run the rope over the boom top. And with the magic that is cranes etc, here is the block reeved up and attached to the transport loop at the front. There's also a nice tying off point included. If you're the kind of person that always wonders where the ladder is when you need it, well on this crane, you can just hang it off the boom at the front. Now we're not going to fit the sideways super lift in the most basic configuration, but we will put on the pendant bars for the super lift. They neatly fit on hangers and get pinned into place. And a nice touch is that the bags are individually numbered so you can find the parts you need. Here you can see a giant thumb pushing the pin into position. We then do the same thing with the pendant bar at the back and on the other side of the boom. Another small part to add are the outrigger pads. And for storage, these get clipped onto the outrigger beams. As usual, we like to start underneath to see the detail, and there's plenty to see on this model. The transmission system is modelled, as are the suspension parts, and although a number of the parts are not physically connected, the overall effect is pleasing. Moving back up to the carrier cab, and it looks really good. There's a sharp DMAG logo sitting just above the perforated grille, and there's a towing hitch and a number plate which has DMAG on it, because this is a generic model. The door mirrors are plastic, and there's a tiny graphic in the cab window. And the windows have seals, and there's a door handle, and a step. One interesting detail is that there's Terex on the seat backs, and that should no longer be there because DMAG is now owned by Tadano. Behind the cab, the body has got highlighting and graphics. The wheels look very good, and the skirts above are solid rather than rubber. 
The quality of some of the graphics is exceptional, including this tiny one, which is perfectly legible. At the back there are diamond plated textured surfaces, and the overall look is authentic with chevrons and more tiny graphics. Looking behind the cab in the engine area and the detailing is of a high standard. There are more textured surfaces, and also a very nice mesh grille, and there's also a highlighted filler cap. Another part that is pleasing is the highly detailed console inside the crane cab. And elsewhere the detailing is also really nice with the slewing motor and textured surface. And UPIA, the exhaust pipe, has actually got a hole in it. The main hydraulic rams are high quality. They have metal jackets and there's a thin white stripe painted down them. The counterweight blocks look smart with chevrons and usable lifting lugs. And the luffing winch for the fly jib is already there and reeved up. Moving up the boom there's more high detail with graphics and there are nicely modelled spooling drums. The telescopic boom sections also look right because of their very thin wall thickness. Another nice touch is that all of the metal sheaves are painted white. Here is the larger hook block and included with this version of the model is a tray to carry it on when it's on a transporter. Not only that but there's another tray and we can use that to carry outrigger beams. And these would be carried separately when it's necessary to keep the axle loads on the crane as low as possible. Then we have another grillage and on that we can put some counterweight pieces. And that helps them to stop sliding about when they're loaded on a truck. But still we're not done because there's another grillage and we can use that for carrying the counterweight tray. And just when you thought there is no more, there is more. There is this accessory box and the spreader plates can fit on top and you can actually pin them to stop them sliding about. With the parts loaded on trays, all we need is a truck to carry them on. We dive back under the DMAG to test the features on the chassis. And the first thing to say is that there's sprung suspension on the axles. Each of the axles, except axle number 6, has adjustable steering. And for the most part you can achieve some very good angles. We have been running the crane in its lightest road going formation. But we can also run it with the front outrigger beams fixed. You'll locate the assembly and then it gets pinned with a long steel pin. And then if you want to be quick about it you can fold the outrigger in. But to get it operational you need to connect up the hydraulic ram. And the end of it gets screwed into the carrier deck. Then we can do a quick check to make sure it works properly. Out onto the cranes etc test track and we can see the springiness in the suspension. And the model also does quite a good job at travelling along in a straight line. With the steering set the angle is good. Although on the review model axle 3 was a bit loose and had a mind of its own. Another steering mode of the real crane is crab steering. But as axle 6 doesn't steer we have to do something about it. So let's send our engineer underneath to take a look. And the solution is to raise axle 6 up out of service. You can do that on the model by screwing it up. And it's very nice that this feature has been replicated on the model. So we've finally arrived on site and we can set the crane up. The crane operator likes to swing so we'll swing the cab around. And to get it to its full position you have to open up a side flap. The outriggers on this crane are in a star formation. So the hydraulic rams also known as giant hands open up the beams and extend the outriggers out. Next we can disconnect the pads and get them ready. And we can make use of the big spreader plates that are included with the model. The outrigger beams also feature a locking bar which can be swung around and pinned into position. When set up the outrigger beams can hold the model wheels free. And they also have a good straight profile. As we are in crane mode there are a couple of handrail sections to press in. And they are a good fit on the review model. Now it's time to get our big stiff boom raised. And that gets locked in position using an allen key on grub screws. Telescoping the boom is easy and smooth although you'll want to keep some weight on the hook while you do it. And a feature is that there are locking points at 45%, 90% and 100%.
Another nice touch is that at last a model has come with some chains included, even though on one set they were not all the same length. The chains are particularly useful because you can use them while you're loading up the counterweight and rigging the crane. So you can have some interesting poses either with the counterweight tray or the separate counterweight blocks. To fit the tray on you need to use the giant hand crane and it clips upwards underneath and then you secure it with a steel pin. Once you've done that you can then load it up with as many blocks as you want. We've seen the cab swing out already and there are a couple more aspects to it. It can be raised up enough to clear the outrigger beams properly and it can also be tilted to help the operator's neck ache. Ok with the boom fully extended let's do a dim check. And to the top it's about 50 inches or 127 centimeters. To increase the lifting capacity of the crane we can add the sideways super lift and we need to add the various parts. To do this there are tiny black nuts and bolts and there are tools provided to help do them up. One tool holds the nut whilst you use the other to turn the bolt. And here we're using the tools to make the first connection. There are connectors to fit at the boom head and they get joined up to the pendant bars. To the end of those we then add the SSL top sheaves and there are nice folding platforms to give access on the boom. Next it's time for the giant hand crane to get working again and we're adding in the large sideways superlift component. To secure that we use small pins and fat fingers won't do it so we're using a pair of pliers. The sideways superlift ram gets fixed with a nut and bolt and we use the same method to join up the pendants to the rear of the crane. The hoist rope gets run over a guide wheel and here we can see that the reeving is done for the SSL itself. With the SSL all connected up we can then put it into service and firstly we'll raise the SSL frame and then telescope out the boom. This has to be done at the same time as letting out rope from the SSL drums but once the right extension is reached you can tighten the whole system up and by doing that it pulls the boom a bit straighter and it increases the crane's lifting capacity. For maximum stability the SSL arms can be spread out wide. To transport the crane with the SSL attached we need to fit the transport bars and these get located into the SSL top sheaves. Once that's done the crane can be displayed in its heaviest configuration with the SSL fitted. It's been a long wait for the DMAG AC700 from IMC Models. But it's been well worth it because this collector's edition is beautifully presented and the model is very high quality. It's got a very high level of detailing with really good functionality and overall it's an outstanding model which is excellent. <laughs> <laughs>